Okay. We are live for this second class of our series on sexual alchemy. Welcome everyone and greetings. Welcome, welcome. Welcome as you're arriving into the space. It's such a joy <laughs> to see all of you here. Welcome and just inviting you to, as you're arriving in the space, to step into just a moment of pause, coming into a moment of pause, coming into a state of slowed movement as you're arriving here from the rest of your day, given what your entire day might have held for you and gently transitioning into the space of this conversation where we are going to be exploring still within the theme of sexual alchemy today we're going to be exploring one of the three origin points of the sexual wound that we mentioned in our introductory class last week and so i've just titled this healing the sexual wound part one and we're going to be specifically exploring and unpacking one of the three origin source points which is the limited and the limiting conditioning and socialization around sex sexuality and our bodies and for you who might be joining us for the first time i know that we've been getting quite a number of new people here for you who might be new my name is dimelo mareri and i am a botswana based spiritual healer wo medicine woman and an embodied leadership guide and it is such a joy to be holding space for us to deeply explore and unpack this very important work and important work because it is of a very important aspect of our being right and so just a content warning before we dive into the content of our class today that there will be a mention of trauma. There might also be a mention of sexual trauma. And I'm mentioning this because these words, these phrases can sometimes trigger. If you might be sitting with some, some experience of trauma, they can trigger the residue or the imprint of whatever experiences you might have had. And so this is an invitation for you to resource yourself as we will be joining in today's conversation, right? To lean into your forms of support that are most reliable for you, right? And please know that your thoughts and your questions are welcome in this space, right? As we will be joining today. And yeah we will just dive into it <laughs> so just a recap from last week right but maybe before that recap so something that i have noticed um with these classes is that we we're using quite we're using words that might be identified as sensitive words on on these social media streets right and so i have actually been feeling quite conflicted around whether this is a teaching to share publicly here on instagram or whether to have us do privately on on zoom right and i had noticed that in the previous live stream like some of the um, some of the segments had had been silenced because uh, like the parts that I just silent um, when you look at the recording 
because of yeah some of what we're discussing here right and so i will mainly just be using the words sexuality and for the physical act itself i'll just use that phrase of physical act <laughs> um, because we want to get the teaching out there like for me it's been important that we do it on a public platform where where it's accessible to everyone right however with the understanding of some of the the limits within the social media spaces that it is not necessarily every conversation <laughs> especially the sensitive ones that will be allowed in these spaces we're just going to choose our words wisely right and so yeah on my end it seems as though i might be frozen so i just need to check with y'all do you hear me okay please let me know before we dive into it am i audible can you see me clearly please let me know and we'll dive into it okay anyone <laughs> yeah for you who are here please let me know if you can hear me well okay beautiful and can you see me okay mm, because the video also seems frozen Mm, just waiting to hear from you okay beautiful all right so we will continue thank you so much for that and I'd love for us to just um, start with a very brief recap from last week right so what we what we established last week is that while this work does inform the physical act itself it is not necessarily about the act all right and what we also arrived to is that this healing work is a sacral and a womb healing work right sacral speaking of the sacral chakra right and so this means that this is a work not only for people who have physical wombs right and this is part of why i keep saying it is for everyone across all genders right and even for women it's for women also who who have wombs or who might currently not have physical wombs right it is also a body healing work because this wounding right it is mostly it is mostly um the impact is mostly on the body right and so when we do this type of healing work we also want to be facilitating healing work for the body or at the level of the body right and what we also established is that it is also an ancestral healing work right because some of the wounding is is one that is carried along generational along generational lines such that even if a trauma might not ha have happened in your lifetime right that which like the wounding and the trauma that you might be sitting with might be one that has happened in generations before your own or before the current one right and another another thing that that we established there is that it is also a holistic healing work right actually for me I recommend it to I recommend for it to be a holistic healing work right and by holistic we mean that it be a work that speaks to your 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 psychological the psychological aspect of you speaks to 
the emotional aspect of you the spiritual aspect the somatic right such that when we're doing this healing work it it touches on all these four aspects of your being right and allows for a healing that is very holistic in nature right that does not only attend to an area while leaving other other areas behind all right and so today we will begin to explore this sexual wound looking at what it is right and also looking at the three layers of its manifestation and how we can heal these right and so today we will begin to have the conversation of what the healing work looks like or what the healing work might be all right and so <laughs> i imagine that because there are three origin points of this wound right um when i looked at what i'd love to share i think today we're, we're going to be able to only move through or cover only one of the origin of the origin points of this wounding right otherwise we would need a three hour session <laughs> to move through all of them which might also be overwhelming and quite heavy to take in or at a go right and so just beginning to step into an exploration of what this wound is right because we want to start our conversation by just looking at what 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 is this wound right what is the sexual wound right and we want to start that that exploration with the appreciation and the understanding that when we are born through our mother's wombs and into this world we are born with a very pure vibration of our sexual energy which is our lifeless energy and which is our creational energy right however we find that given how our world is currently set up in the systems the dominant systems in our world there's often a distortion or an interference of the organic nature or the purity or the innocence of this energy all right and this is how the wounding occurs all right and so yeah so this is how the wounding occurs and in my deep reflection of this work and what this wounding is what has emerged are three source points like when we ask the question what sits at the root of this wound all right what what is the source of this wound i have arrived at three things right we spoke about this briefly in our introductory class last week and today i'd like for us to go much 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 deeper into each one of them today we'll do only one and then in the next class we'll probably complete the the last two right because i want for us to go deep into this first one and as we're unpacking it we're also looking at what the healing work is the healing work that you can do in your own life right and so these three origin points, which are the source, which sit at the root of this wound, is one, it's limited, meaning not enough, doesn't even scratch the surface, right? Limited and limiting. It's limiting because it stunts us, it, it, it constricts us, right? It's limited and limiting conditioning and socialization around matters of our sexuality and our bodies right and so there's very limited education <laughs> and the little the little that we get that is said to us that is tr transmitted to us in the most it tends to be limiting right and then two there is distorted programming around our sexuality and our bodies right 
and what it means for you to be and to exist and to live life in your body as it is with your with your with your specific gender right and number three one of the origin source points is sexual abuse all right across the very wide spectrum of how this can happen all right and so today we're just going to be exploring the con the limited and limiting conditioning and socialization around our sexuality and our bodies and then in the next class we'll look at the last two all right and so what typically happens is that as i've mentioned when we're born into this world we are we are born with a purity like with a vibration of purity of our sexual energy and our life force energy all right however as little ones like we begin to witness how the adults in our lives like this is how the wounding begins to to happen right we begin to witness how the adults in our lives are engaging around this thing all right <laughs> often in hushed tones right this thing we're speaking of sexuality and our bodies right just how they're navigating the matter of sexuality, how they're navigating the matter of our bodies, right? It's usually in harsh tones and in hiding, right? And to the mind of a little one, which is quite impressionable, right? We begin to take this as though it might mean that this is something that is not to be spoken about. This is something that is to be hidden, right? And this is part of why we might actually struggle to talk about it, talk about our sexuality, to talk about our bodies, even in intimate relationships, right? And so if you might have wondered, why do I struggle to talk about this, right? <laughs> you like, I'd, I'd love to invite you to, to look at some of how this was modeled to you as a little one, right? How the adults around you navigated this aspect of their being and the beliefs that the beliefs the stories that might have been imprinted for you right and on it being something like the just the implicit teaching that it's something to be hidden right we might see how for some teens like some teens hide their initial engagement right this might have this might have like been your experience right <laughs> where we are hiding our sexual engagements from our parents because like there is no real conversation around this right and this culture of hiding matters of our sexuality especially for teenagers right it might result in an exploration in unsafe and unsupportive environments, right? Opening a gateway for some trauma to happen, right? And so as I'm sharing this, I know that we are exploring the shadow of our sexuality, right? And I just want to name and acknowledge that there is light as well, right? There are spaces where there is a lot of good where meaningful conversations are being had right where there's proper and full and meaningful education for our young ones right but for now bear with me as we deeply explore the shadow of this right and so given how this matter of sexuality and our bodies might have been modeled to us right this might also be part of why it might be difficult to communicate and to express what you want all right and this connects to the shame that we might feel around the physical act itself and our sexuality broadly right and it might also be part of the reason why just as an example it might be a struggle to engage in lit spaces right and this might connect to 
the shame that we might feel around our bodies right and so um <laughs> i want to I want to take a few steps back, you know, where we were talking about how the ways in which this part of us might be formed or might be part of why we might struggle to engage in conversation about this matter in our relationships, right? And I also want to add, because I've seen that, often we're able to have very like light and silly conversation about it, which is great, right? But I have also been witnessing that because of the conditioning, there might be difficulty in engaging in meaningful conversation about this matter that also allows for our expansion and our evolution, right? Because I actually believe that our sexual energy and the manifestation of it, it's one of the avenues through which we can expand and evolve, right? And so we are wanting to dissolve like any wounded conditioning any wounded teachings that we might have received right that are keeping us from engaging meaningfully in ways that allow us to grow and to evolve right and so here the healing is for you to begin to identify how matters of sexuality in your body were modeled to you and the beliefs that you might hold right so this is work that um like just given the office that i have the healing office it's work that is best suited for my private healing program where we sit and we go deep into the work right looking through at what it is has been your experience right so this would request require that you sit and you do the inner work right and second um the healing work would also be identifying what you were taught and how this informs how you currently show up today. And so we want to bring this to light. We want to bring these beliefs, like these attitudes, right? These behaviors around your, your sexuality and your body, all right? That might have been um, internalized from your external environment while you were still young right and we want to begin to rewire this right such that they may align with the evolved and the elevated ways in which you might want to experience your sexuality in your body all right and slowly like closely connected to this is like this experience of how also as little ones we might have been told not to touch some of our body parts like this is how the wounding also occurs right how we might have been told not to touch some of our body parts and how sometimes we might have been scolded just for touching our bodies right and also how some body parts might not have been called by their real names on codes and off codes right and so what this teaches us and what it does is like for the mind of a young impressionable human being like the message that is received that might be received and that might be internalized is that the body is not to be engaged with right the body is to be hidden the body is to be is something to be ashamed of right and this activates a layer of shame around the body right and so like this deep shame in our bodies and about our bodies also informs because the body is the vessel through which we engage in the physical act itself right and so if the vessel is carrying a lot of shame and if we're carrying a lot of shame around the vessel it means that to some degree that shame informs the energy from which we engage in matters of our sexuality and our bodies right and we might find that many of us step into step into these matters from a place of shame right and 
we find that because we also haven't been taught to have meaningful conversation about this we might find that while we're engaging in it from a place of shame there's also very little space to actually process and dissolve this this shame right just through conversation with your loved ones right or your significant others right and it's interesting because <laughs> What we're, we're talking about here, like the physical act, what we mean here is actually the creation process, right? It is the sacred process through which humans are created, right? And so if we are arriving to the space from an energy of shame, right? It means that like the creation process itself is shrouded in an energy of shame right it means that if we're struggling to have conversation about this <laughs> what that means is that the creation process itself becomes taboo something that is actually meant to be sacred something that is divine something that is of god then becomes taboo and shameful which doesn't feel right for me <laughs> because the creation process the creation act is a thing of god right something that we would have an embodied understanding of if there was grounded and meaningful and comprehensive education around this yeah and so what the shame does, because we want to go a bit further, like it doesn't just end at, there's a lot of shame in the body, like this, the, the, there are consequences, all right, to there being like this high degree of shame being held in the body, right? The shame deeply disconnects us from our bodies, which is actually where the intelligence of our sexuality lives. It's like if you want to understand your sexuality, if you want to understand how you want to express it, what it means to you, what you want and how you want to do it, you want to ask your body because the intelligence of your sexuality is held within your body. That's where the wisdom is held. Right? And the heartbreaking thing about this also is that the shame disconnects us from our body and our bodies are the temple of our divinity. So by virtue of our bodies housing our soul and housing our spirit, they serve as the holy temple of our divinity, the holy temple of God, right? And so shame separates, right? It separates us from our intelligence. It separates us from our divinity right and so a huge part of the healing work here is of healing our relationship with our bodies it's of healing our bodies it is of releasing and of transmuting the shame that we might hold in our bodies right i'm gonna pause there for a moment and just allow us to take that in and it would also be great because I seem to be having technological glitches <laughs> it would be great just to hear if you all can still hear me can you still hear me okay just let me know just letting me know if you can hear me and see me okay and just also allowing that to serve as an integration pause 
for what has been shared thus far. Okay, beautiful. Thank you. Please also let me know <laughs> what is yeah standing out for you. Um, what your thoughts might be as well. Okay, yeah. And so, just continuing with this exploration of the shame. So this shame that we hold in our bodies or around our bodies. It also becomes perpetuated by the very pervasive frequency in our world that there's something inherently wrong with our bodies or some parts of our bodies all right and this also connects to the religion wound right it also connects to our understanding and the wound the wounding that we might hold around or from religion and also around God, all right? And this also connects to the distorted programming around our bodies where media, entertainment industry might be sending out messages around what our bodies are supposed to look like, what size we're supposed to be, what shape our bodies are supposed to be, what shape some of our body parts are supposed to be. All right and so this further reinforces like this this shame that we might hold around our bodies that we might hold within our bodies and that further disconnects us from our bodies and thereby disconnects us even further from the intelligence of our bodies from the inner knowing of our bodies from the organic source intelligence of our sexuality and how it is to manifest and express in the world because your body is the source of that knowing all right and for us women the shame is compounded by the shame held around our intimate experiences as women which are actually also our rites of passage our sacred rites of passage as women which include our our menstrual cycle matters of our sexuality pregnancy childbirth breastfeeding our postpartum body menopause and growing old right so when we go deeper into each one of these intimate experiences of our bodies and these rites of passage we find a lot like huge residues of of shame there's shame around menstrual blood there's shame around a menstruating woman right and there can be shame around pregnancy you know for like our society can sometimes shame women who become pregnant outside of wedlock right they can also be shaming for <laughs> the number of children a woman chooses to have right there can also be a lot of shaming i forgot to add here motherhood there can be a lot of shaming also for how a woman chooses to mother her children and so what we see is that like the intimate experiences of women and just the journey of our bodies as women are ones that are shrouded in so much shame right and Again, like just given how our world is currently wired and the systems that are in place, right? And the healing work here, right? As I've already mentioned, one, we're invited into a body healing work of you healing your relationship with your body, right? We're invited into reconnecting with our bodies, like leaning into experiences and practices that reconnect us with our bodies, right? And so when we do that, we begin to reconnect and awaken the intelligence that is held within our bodies, right? That will tell you, <laughs> that will guide you, that will show you the way of what your sexuality is, of its organic manifestation. It will show you what you want and how you want it and how to move, right? Without needing to lean into movies or porn or or music videos to tell you 
how to make manifest your sexuality or how to live through or in your body as a woman. Your body knows, your body has these codes within you, right? And so that is part of the sacred invitation for us as women to do the healing work of healing our relationship with our bodies, to come back into our bodies, to release and to alchemize the shame that is held within our bodies and around our body parts, right? So there might be like a lot of numbness, right? And so that is usually an invitation to heal, right? Often like the parts of our bodies that hold shame might feel numb, right? And that is an invitation to heal. And another part of the healing work for this is of coming back into your body, right? And somatic healing work can be a great support for this, right? Of you coming back into your body, learning to occupy, learning to live in your body. Like that is deeply, deeply healing, right? And some of what we can lean into to reconnect with the body, it can be like through pleasure. Earlier this week, I shared in my stories that pleasure can be one of the ways in which we we reconnect with our bodies right and what we want to do here is to lean into pleasure without sexualizing the pleasure right to learn to touch our bodies to learn to witness our bodies without it being sexual because part of the wounding as well is the over sexualization of our bodies right which can hurt for our bodies it's like <laughs> is 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 my being is my existence only for 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 the physical act you know that's how the wounding can happen for the body and so we want to we want to realign how we relate with our bodies in that sense all right such that it's no longer just a sexualized interaction with our bodies but one of sacredness and of reven of reverence right yeah so one of the ways of reconnecting with our bodies <laughs> is through dance it can be through pleasure without sexualizing it. it can be through touch through witnessing your body remember Part of the wounded conditioning has been to not look at the body to not touch the body and so part of the healing is witnessing the body like you could do like mirror work in front of a full-length mirror and on a daily basis just look at your body and listen to your inner thoughts um and the inner dialogue that emerges right Another form of healing for the body or of reconnecting with the body is through massage, self-massage, like breast massage, womb massage, right? Without sexualizing those body parts, right? This can be deeply, deeply healing, especially in releasing and in alchemizing the imprint of the trauma that is held within your body, all right? And also, most importantly, we want to lean into the initiation of those rites of passages, right? You want to lean into the initiation of your menstrual cycle, right? You want to lean into the initiation of childbirth, of pregnancy, of your sexuality, right? Part of the initiation of your sexuality is to deeply... Is to deeply... I want to say examine, interrogate the beliefs that you might hold around your sexuality and integrate these, right? You want to alchemize any shame, any guilt, any fear that you might hold around this aspect of your being. You want to deeply examine your beliefs around your menstrual cycle. Do you possibly believe it to be an inconvenience? And we want to alchemize that, right? So each of these rites of passages holds an, an initiator invitation for us, right? That is also part of the healing work, right? Let me look at what we also have here. Pregnancy is a rite of passage, right? 
I know that currently in our world, we just treat it as something that <laughs> just happens, right? It is so much more than that. Menopause is an initiatory. It's an initiation into eldership, right? Growing old, becoming an elder is also an initiation. So we want to lean into the initiation of these rites of passage, right? Okay. Let's just pause for a bit. Take that in for a moment. <laughs> before we continue and before we begin to wrap this up. So what I wanted to add there is that while there is this conditioning that so the thing is we we find that there is like what's being transmitted implicitly and explicitly is quite limiting in nature right and like the other the other part of it is that while there is this limiting conditioning we also find we also find ourselves with with a gap in our education right in the sense that there isn't a grounded and a comprehensive education around who we are as sexual beings in our world all right so quite often and again there's the light there are spaces where this is done well there are families where the adults do their part right however often we find that there's there's often no real conversation about as teenagers around what we are to do with this with these emerging desires right how we are to in, and how we are to engage with it and how we are to engage in matters of our sexuality that honor all of who we are right and this bit of honoring all of who we are all of our being also speaks to matters of consent right consent with ourselves most importantly and then consent with others because i believe that self-consent serves as a foundational experience or aspect of consensual engagements with others often we find that we ourselves transgress against ourselves we do to ourselves or we allow things we say yes to things that truly <laughs> we have not checked with ourselves to feel for whether it's a full yes all right and so there's been a gap in our education around that like how do i engage in matters of my sexuality and my body while honoring the fullness of our being right and and this is not to to place like some blame on our adults or those who raised us because they themselves didn't know it's like this is such a big like it's it's a long cycle that by us being here today this is actually a commitment to begin to break that cycle, right? Of young adults who are not properly initiated into adulthood. Of young adults who are not taught comprehensively around what it means to be an adult in this world. Right? And so the question is, how do we in this room, in this conversation, evolve and better support the next conversation the next generation right <laughs> we do that by doing our own inner work right for us to be able to have meaningful conversations with our kids and those that we are guardians of we ourselves need to have arrived to a place where we are comfortable significantly comfortable <laughs> with these matters right and so we we need to do the inner work 
so that we may break the cycle of there not being a real education in our world around our sexuality and our bodies as human beings. All right? And another thing that sits within that gap of there not being a grounded and comprehensive education around this is that we are also not taught how to wield our sexual energy as an asset, as a vital resource, as something that we can lean into, that we can tap into for the manifestation, for the creation, for the expansion of our lives. And we're also not taught how to do that in integrity and in sovereignty, like how to protect it, right? Such that it is not influenced by external energies, right? Remember how at the beginning we spoke about that when we are born, we are born with a very pure frequency of our sexual energy. However, this becomes interfered with as we journey through this world, right? And so there's also the invitation to not necessarily contain, <laughs> but to protect the purity and the innocence and the sanctity of this energy. And we do that the more we, 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 we grow an appreciation of how sacred it is, right? And so this brings me to remember how earlier we spoke about the religion wound and the god wound and even just connecting to what we just said about how this is something we actually protect because there are influences that can interfere with that can distort all right to conclude this conversation let's just chat briefly about the religion wound or the god wound all right and it connects to those three things that i've just mentioned right so this is not to say that everything that we're, we're taught in church is not okay the majority of it is really good right however there's like a small percentage of it that has over time become distorted, inverted, and interfered with, right? Some of it has been left out, right? Such as teachings as this one on the body, on the intelligence of the body, right? So some of what that we might be, we might be taught in various religions is like the teaching to renounce desires of the flesh, right? the teaching that the body is bad somehow and must be renounced that and that sexual energy or sexual desires are to be repressed right i know that this might be a difficult one to take in right and so whew, we want to breathe right so why would god create the body if the body is not important or if the body is not needed all right why not just allow us to roam this earth as spirit beings without the body if at all the body is not important all right and so just leaning into our understanding of how deliberate creational intelligence is there's a reason why the body has been created <laughs> there's a reason why god created the body right and so that those are some of the aspects that have been omitted in our religious texts and in our religious teachings right and so what what these teachings do is that they disconnect us with our body and they also disconnect us with our divinity because remember our spirit and our soul is held within the body and so when we renounce the very vessel and the very temple that holds your spirit that holds the soul it disconnects us right it makes connection very difficult or very limited right 
and it also means that we are not getting to experience the fullness of who we are so in religious spaces even some spiritual spaces there's often a lot of fear a lot of guilt and a lot of shame around our sexuality and our bodies right which actually disconnect us from god <laughs> like when you're feeling guilty about having explored your sexuality and you're like oh my god this means i can't speak to god now of course that interferes with your relationship with god all right and so what i want to bring into this conversation remember how earlier we were talking about the invitation to protect the the sacredness the purity of our sexual energy right is that what what i know is is what i know is that while it is true that there has been a distortion there has been a distortion of our sexual energy given what's happening in the world right so there's definitely been a distortion there's definitely been an interference to a point where for some of us like we might be driven by our sexual desires i think this is what the church was speaking to right that sometimes we might we might we might grow to become ruled and driven only by the desires of the flesh right and this is because of the interference of the distortion right and of the lack of comprehensive education around how to wield this as a vital resource right and so while it's true that there has been a distortion the solution is not to renounce <laughs> instead of renouncing we need to learn how to master our sexual energy and our emotions and i'm mentioning emotions because <laughs> i had a conversation with someone this past week and because here's the thing like there are these four aspects of our being the emotional the body the physical the spiritual psychological in the 3d world we worship very much the mind which is the psychological the mental and in spiritual spaces we worship very much the spirit the soul and often there is a looking down upon the body and the emotions right of course because they've been interfered with given the conditioning given the programming in our world right however the solution is not to renounce these the solution is to do our inner healing work and arriving at a place of mastering our sexual energy and our emotions of arriving at sexual intelligence sexual maturity emotional intelligence emotional maturity right and this is because when we suppress and when we repress our sexual energy as we have seen in a lot of religious spaces it can lead to unhealthy manifestations of the sexual energy right and this can sometimes look like sexual abuse sexual violence right we've seen this in a lot of religious spaces way because members of a particular church are being told to suppress to repress to repress to pretend as though this aspect of their being does not exist then there begins to emerge like a lot of abuses relating to our sexuality which may involve little children right yeah and so part of the healing work here is to heal the god wound is the wounding around god around who god is around what god believes about you <laughs> or what you think god thinks and believes about you <laughs> it's such an important work right especially in matters of our sexuality right because it's interesting because like in a lot of church spaces like all we are taught all we are told is don't do this before you get married right <laughs> and then 
then there's absolutely no conversation until we get married and i think by some magic wand once we are married we must just know how to do it and how to do it perfectly and how to satisfy our partners without with no real grounded and meaningful conversation i think this is not okay like we we're not doing right by ourselves all right and so we who are convened here when we begin to do the healing work around this right we allow ourselves to become clearer inner spaces clear clearer vessels for the flow of this very vital energy of our of our being right and also so that when we didn't receive in any education we may be able to curate edu like meaningful educational spaces for the younger generations and break the cycle of this wounding right yeah and lastly before we conclude what this teaching the teaching the teaching around how we ought to renounce the body how we ought to renounce desires of the flesh it is an incomplete teaching all right and part of what it also does is that it disconnect like apart from disconnecting us from god apart from disconnecting us from our body and our divinity it also disconnects us from our original creation intelligence because the body is the portal like it holds the codes it holds the gateway to the rivers the inner rivers of original creation intelligence right and so yeah there's a huge invitation for us to to heal around around this right to to dissolve like this wounded conditioning and to dissolve the imprint of the socialization the limited socialization limiting socialization that we might have received around here right and while we did explore some of the healing work right i think towards the very end of the series i'll just do a video where i bring all together all like my suggestions of what the healing work can look like all right just grouping it all together for all these three origin points of the sexual wound right and yeah that brings to a conclusion what i wanted to share today <laughs> um i see there's somebody here who's been requesting to to be in my live video i'm going to let you in in a bit right but let me just conclude this by saying that i i currently have my private healing sessions open for bookings right and this is for you who might want to go deeper with this work and heal right it is for you who might while you're listening to this and you might feel like you you need like deeper support right for for what you might for what your experiences might have been for what your journey might have been please do know that my yeah my once of healing sessions are currently open for booking and a link to my booking calendar is on my bio and i also have a private healing program where i can support you for a minimum of four months right deeply diving into the work of healing your womb um of sexual alchemy as well right so if that might resonate for you just go check out those two offerings at the link in my bio and yeah if they might feel like a yes for you if they might feel like something that might support you it would be an absolute honor to support you on your healing journey yeah oh i'm so glad <laughs> 
and if you have any questions at this point any thoughts any questions we could just take those in the next minute or two i would be very happy to hear from you mm. okay <laughs> Yeah, it's also interesting, like winter, winter is slowly coming in my part of the world. Um, and so it's been getting dark quickly. When we started this, the sun was still out and now it's gone. <laughs> yeah, all right. It is such a pleasure. I'm so glad it was enlightening for you. <laughs> Thank you so much for having joined in on the conversation. And yeah, until our next class, it was such a joy. It was such an honor to, to share these with you. And I wish you a beautiful evening ahead. Or yeah, if it might be day, I wish you a beautiful day if it might be day where you are. I am I'm based in Botswana. Quite specifically, I am in Mulapulole. So that's where I'm based. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, bye everyone. Until the next class. Keep well.